Good morning, church. Today I wanted to talk to you about uh, John chapter 6. This is the day after yesterday's passage. So yesterday we were looking at when Jesus fed the 5,000 people with just a few loaves and a few fish. And that miracle, I'm certain, was just amazing to everybody who experienced it. And so today we're going to look at what happens the next day. And this is what happens the next day. It says in John chapter 6, Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus answers, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. He says, do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him, God has placed his seal of approval. Jesus is lying there where he says, do not work for food that spoils, is an important line. Now, as we talk about it, I, I want to let you know a little bit of the picture of what's really going on here. You see, What's really going on here is that the people ate some food yesterday, and it was free. Jesus had done this miracle. They thought it was an amazing miracle. But it's not just that they wanted to um, see Jesus as this powerful individual or, or to worship him as this powerful individual or even the Son of God. What they wanted is something that met their own needs. And with Jesus, it generally comes down to this. People say, okay, Jesus, what have you done for me lately? So this is what they ask Jesus. He says that God has placed his seal of approval on the Son of Man. Jesus is talking about himself when he says the Son of Man. And so the people ask a very superficial question. They say, what must we do to do the works God requires? Okay, so Moses gave us a set of rules. If you're claiming to be something important, maybe you've got a set of rules for us too. Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Now, this is a little tricky thing that the crowd has done. They have just put Jesus in the position of Moses by saying, what do we have to do to please God? Jesus falls for it. He answers the question. Here's the work of God, but he answers it weirdly. He says the work of God is to believe in the one that God has sent. Not to do a list of do's and don'ts or anything like that. Jesus says just believe on the one he has sent. So... Now that they've trapped him into answering their question, they lead into the next question. What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? So, Jesus, you just told us what we need to do. We need to believe in you. But Jesus, what are you going to do? And then they remind him of this thing in the Old Testament. They said, our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. You see, their deal is that Moses gave them free food for 40 years. Jesus, if you want to lead us, we want you to be the kind of leader who does miracles daily. Let's get daily miracles, Jesus. If you give us those kinds of signs, then we'll follow you. Well, Jesus pokes them right in the heart. At least he tries to. I don't think they were paying too much attention, but they say this. Jesus says the to them. Very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who's given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. There are two things that are wrong with what Jesus just said from the perspective of the people who are listening. Jesus is saying, no, my Father is the one who gave you the food, not Moses. So, it's a different situation entirely. But then secondly, he says, the bread that comes down from heaven is a bread that is for the whole world and not just for the Jewish people. Well, they completely miss it. They don't hear what Jesus is trying to say. And so they say, okay, sir, 
always give us this bread. Jesus, we don't just want bread today. We don't just want bread tomorrow. We want it all the time. Give it to us all the time. This is the place where you and I find ourselves in a lot. The question is, Jesus, what have you done for us lately? No matter how many miracles Jesus does in your life, we always come back to this place. Jesus, what have you done for us today? You know, one of the biggest problems with miracles is that they, like food, wear out. They, like food, are temporary. Every miracle, a food, a food miracle is just the most obvious of them, but every miracle is temporary. You heal a person of sickness one day, they're going to get sick again. You raise a person from the dead one day. You raise a person from the dead one day, and they're going to die again. You know, all miracles are temporary. Food is just the most obvious example because I'm going to get hungry in just a couple more hours. So the people say, Jesus, always give us this bread. And Jesus says something to them that we need to grasp. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you've seen me and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. Jesus says, don't work for food that spoils. Don't look for just a miracle for today, and then a miracle for tomorrow, and then a miracle for the next day. Jesus says, I'm gonna give you a miracle that lasts your whole life long and on into eternity. Believe in the one who was sent by God, Look to the sun, and you will have eternal life. And that's my encouragement for you today. I know we're human beings who tend to look at the miracles and we say, oh, that was a wonderful thing. God, you did a wonderful thing. Thanks for that miracle. And then the very next day, it's, okay, God, what are you going to do for me today? What's today's miracle going to be all about? And Jesus says, no. Just believe, look to the Son, and trust Him for eternal life. We have a hope that goes far beyond the frustrations of this world. We have a hope that goes far beyond just today. And we have a miracle, the one miracle that lasts for all eternity. It's the miracle of you receiving eternal life by looking to the Son. Today, look to Jesus. Focus on your relationship with him, not just what has he done for you lately. Focus on your relationship with him and let him remind you all over again of the eternal life you have when you look to him. That's my encouragement for you today. Let's all live it together. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for giving us another new day. Thank you for giving us the miracle of breath, the miracle of life, and the miracle of awareness of our eternal life. Jesus, would you confirm that in our hearts today and help us to rely on you, to rest in you, to look to you, to trust you, and not just to trust for the next miracle you do in our lives. Thanks for today. We pray it all in your name, the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Have a great day.